phase changes occur when a material changes from solid to liquid or liquid to gas or from uh, all sorts of other changes. So it can also go um, from gas to liquid. It can go from solid directly to gas. So we're going to learn a few of them now. So as far as phase changes go, the one that most people know is melting. If you leave a solid piece of ice, for example, leave it long enough and it melts. So what happens, sort of as we sort of zoom into what's really going on here, this is when that we have solid to a liquid. This is really what's happening here. And this is mainly due to temperature. Now we also have freezing. Now it turns out you have freezing, that's when you go the opposite way. So this time it's liquid to solid. So you might go from like liquid water to solid ice. Um, I put this picture in because I actually took this picture myself. Uh, I think of freezing and I always think of this. This is actually a crazy mountain that I decided to go climb a couple of years ago. It's in uh, Alaska. It's called Mount McKinley or some people call it Denali. But this is actually a picture I took while we were near the top. You actually land on a glacier way down here and it takes weeks to get up to this point here. But everything is so cold there. It was like minus 40 degrees all the time. And I remember actually one thing that was really important was to keep your liquids from freezing. Because, see, you'd have your water bottle, for example, and if you just leave it as a water bottle, it doesn't take long before it freezes solid. Well, good luck drinking that. So that just meant that, you know, we had to be very, very aware of keeping our liquids liquid. So that's, I mean, that reminds me of freezing here. But we have freezing, which is going from liquid to solid. We have melting, which is solid to liquid. And those two together, okay, so this one right here, or this one, because these are just like solid to liquid or liquid to solid, they're sort of reversible. We call this fusion. I don't mean nuclear fusion, but I mean fusion. We're going to talk later about latent heat of fusion, and that's what we're going to mean here. Fusion means either solid to liquid or liquid to solid. We're going to consider that fusion. Now, hopefully you guys know confusion. Uh, no, sorry, that's actually too bad. All right, let's move on. So we also have other phase changes. We can have boiling. So from this same trip uh, that I had done, uh, this is a picture of me with in front of our little tent. So we were setting up tents all the time on the ice. That's why we actually have these little poles to know where it's safe to walk around because there's always these big holes in the ice you could fall in, and that's not fun. So we would always put these poles there. This is our little kitchen tent that it took us you know, hours and hours to dig out a tent. And we'd make a, we'd put a little stove in there and cut out little shelves where we could sit. So it's, it's like being a kid again, making a snow fort. Only this is actually your home. So we'd all live in tents. The tents are actually arrayed around this. This is our little kitchen tent. So that's actually where we'd convene. We actually dug it really, really down deep. So you go down a few steps and everybody can sit around in a nice circle and chat when there's a big storm pouring in. But boiling was a big issue. Now, boiling itself, uh, this is when you go from um, a liquid to gas. This is what happens with boiling. So you go from a liquid to a gas form. So if you go from liquid to gas, we consider that boiling. And again, on this particular mountain, altitude is so high that actually the boiling point of water is not 100 degrees Celsius. It's actually considerably lower. I think it was somewhere around 80 degrees, for example. So that just means that, well, it's nice. It's easy to boil water. Water boils at a lower temperature. But the problem is that means in order to cook stuff, it takes a lot longer. Imagine if you have rice and rice is supposed to sit, uh, let's say, you know, for some minutes at 100 degrees. Well, you can never make it 100 degrees, so it takes a lot longer to cook things. So cooking things up at high altitude, I basically gave up. I realized I'm a really lousy cook to begin with. At high altitude, I'm an extra lousy cook just because I could never get the times right. I would always overcook it or undercook it. It just, I couldn't seem to do it right. So liquid to gas, so that's when you're boiling. You know this if you're boiling, you know, a cup of tea, for example, or boiling some water for tea or coffee. Now condensing is the opposite. That's when it goes from gas to liquid. Because this process is also reversible, just like before. Just like melting and freezing are sort of the opposites to each other, while boiling and condensing are opposites to each other. And you might experience this on a really hot summer day, depending on where you live. You can experience something like this. Because this is when there's lots of humidity in the air. So there's actually little air you know, molecules all over the place that are floating around. And those, if there's a lot of humidity, there's a lot of water attached to those. That means when the water in the gas hits a cold surface, it can actually make a liquid. And you can see it because there's actually a liquid on the outside of the container. 
So that's a nice example of condensation or condensing. So going from boiling, which is liquid to gas, or condensing, which is gas to liquid, those, both of them together, are called something. We call it vaporization. So we're later going to talk about you know, a latent heat of vaporization versus a latent heat of fusion. So that's where those come in. So those are the, the four main phase changes people know about, melting and freezing and boiling and condensing or condensation. But there's another one. There's another one that I think is really cool. I mean, there's other ones as well on top of all these, but this is one I think is really cool. It's called sublimation. That one doesn't really belong with the other ones, but it's so awesome. I just wanted to show you it. It's actually when you go directly from solid to gas. So you go right from solid ice, let's say, to gas. You skip the liquid phase. That is actually really cool. Um, it, it turns out this happens on Mars. That's why I actually put this picture right here, because this is actually a picture taken on Mars. This is taken actually fairly recently. Uh, this is by the Mars Curiosity rover. Um, so going from solid to gas, this actually happens, for example, on Mars. And why is that? That's because the pressure is so low. See, on Mars, there is an atmosphere. It's not really air, it's other materials. But the pressure is very low. And what pressure does, it pushes on things and keeps liquids liquid. If your pressure is so low, that means then you actually can't really hold a stable liquid. So Mars is an example of that. There's actually solid ice. There's also um, water in the atmosphere, but there's no liquid water, or at least not liquid water on the surface. There could actually be some underneath, and that's what's really exciting to us. We know that there was liquid water on the surface of Mars in the past. That's because it used to have a thicker atmosphere. See, now that its atmosphere is really thin, it's very tenuous, with sort of wispy atmosphere. In fact, we think it's leaking its atmosphere. So NASA's just sent a new uh, probe to go out and check that out and see how much atmosphere is actually leaking away. But it turns out um, sublimation really happening on Mars, for example.